see when you were young. When I was a little kid. New Year's Eve was a big deal. That was wild. But see, I wasn't old enough to attend the party because my parents would have these blowouts. So my dad, that's what my dad called them. This is how my dad sounded. This is exactly what my dad would say to my mom. He used to call my mom babe. He'd go, hey, babe, we're going to have a blowout. Run out to Foremost. Stock up on the old Seagram 7. Highball City. Get some Schlitz. Uncle John likes the scotch, so grab a bottle of that. Then he'd invite over the relatives, some of the relatives, not... And not the stuffy ones, the, the younger ones. Cousin Steve would come by. With his, he always had a different girlfriend or a different wife. <laughs> you know? Joanne would come by. I know Rob's, Robert's listening out in, in Merrillville. Joanne would come by, all my cousins. And then my dad would invite the neighbors. So this was an odd blend, family, neighbors. Whole weird blend. I'm seven, six, seven, eight years old. They're going to have a party. I so badly wanted to go downstairs and join the party, but I was too young. It was an adult party. You heard swearing, drinking, smoking. Everybody smoked. In our basement, our basement in Hegwish. Hegwish! My dad fixed up the basement, knotty pine paneling, about halfway up the wall, knotty pine, then, then he put drywall with plaster skim on it, plaster. It's back in the 50s. Our house was built in 52. Father remodeled it somewhere around the end of the 50s there. I always remember it being finished. Had the bar, L-shaped bar. You got to have the L-shaped bar accommodate more people. My dad come and dirt the basement from the bar. Herb Alpert records on, a little bit of little Wally Polkas. A lot of Herb Alpert. My mom loved Herb Alpert. New Year's party, little kid. Brother and sister were older. They're already off. They're teenagers doing their own thing. They didn't stick around for the cornball party, but that's all I had. Six, seven years old. You didn't have much. You didn't have much of a choice. Six, seven, eight years old. You were stuck. Stuck in the house. Couldn't go out. What, what I have 42 cents in my piggy. What am I going to do? I don't have a car. It's snowing. It's horrible. I can't, I can't buy anything. I, I don't have an ID. I'm six, seven, eight years old. So the party, that was it. The party at the house. Now, our house... And I grew up in was small. We had two bedrooms, bathroom between two bedrooms, little hallway, and there was a laundry chute. This laundry chute. This was my tie line to the party. Now, we only had one bathroom in that house, so everybody had to come up from the basement. Six stairs landing, six stairs kitchen. Dining room, you bang a right, bathroom straight ahead, my bedroom on the right, parents' bedroom on the left. I don't even know where the hell my brother and sister slept. <laughs> now, there was a, my, my sister had the room, but she was already kind of uh, hanging out, you know, teenager, kind of out and about all the time. Brother slept downstairs, but he was always gone. So the laundry chute, that was my tie line. That was where it was at. For me, at that time as a little kid. Now, parents wanted me to stay in the bedroom while the party's not. That's going to happen. I, I was sneaking around. I was up. I, I, I never slept as a kid. I had a hard time sleeping. Kind of still do today. I had some restless nights the past few nights. Dog's not feeling well. I'm, I'm watching it. I'm up every hour checking the dog. So back to that laundry chute in Hegwish. Hegwish! 
that was my timeline to the party. People started coming by, you know, upstairs first. Hi, hi, we brought some coffee, cake. Our parties, my father didn't really give a darn about food. You know, now it's all about the food. And when we had a, when we had a party back then, you come over for dinner, Christmas, we had food. Had some nashis for the New Year's Eve party, mainly booze and cigarettes. That was the key thing. I don't think anyone else was doing anything. I don't remember smelling weed or anything back then. This is, I'm talking 1964, 65, even maybe 63. Maybe they were, I don't know, maybe they were out, they were out in, the, in the old 64 Impala SS that my cousin Don had. They always had cool cars back then, too. One of the uncles would drive the old sedan, Chevy 2. So the party would start. People would start coming by. They were just compiling in thousands of people. Mostly they come through the front room door. Mom had the house all nice. She's always changing the furniture and artwork. Velvet paintings, I remember, were coming out. She was big on that. Shopping at EJ Corvettes for the newest furnishings. People would start coming in. Filtering downstairs, I'd hear the music. Then the party would get rolling. I'd have to go to, you better stay in the bedroom now. That's what they'd tell me. Sure, Mom, I'm going to stay in the bedroom. As soon as the party started going, I'd have to come out like a little secret spy. In my little hallway. Now, let me explain the laundry chute to you. It wasn't in the bathroom. It was just outside the bathroom door between both bedrooms in this small hallway. The attic entrance was above us in that little hallway. So the great thing about where my father built the bar, the laundry chute was almost right above the bar. It was on one side of the L-shaped bar. So I got to see about two or three bar stools. Remember, my parents had really nice kind of bamboo bar stools, really cool. Wrought iron. My mom was into wrought iron. She's at wrought iron anything, she'd buy it. Two minutes. She'd go to Cor EJ Corvettes on 87th and Cicero. She'd be, wrought iron, I want that. I don't care what it is, I'm buying it. She actually took out one of the walls leading down to the stairway that had the banister connected to it. Made my dad take that out. He made this like little steps of wall so he wouldn't fall over when you're coming down or up the stairs. She took that out and got a wrought iron railing. I got to have that wrought iron. My mom would say Roth iron. I was like, Mom, even when I was six, I go, it's silent. The G-H-T, you know, it's wrought iron. She put that railing in. And that kind of bummed me out because that was my little secret wall was where I hid behind to kind of peek over to see some of the action directly happening in the basement. You know, it could have been Cousin Susie. And her boyfriend, Johnny, making out maybe in the corner. Wow, they're making out. Never saw that. So back to that laundry chute, I'd have a view of a couple of the bar stools. Great for the down blouse shots. Even as a little kid, I was like, whoa, this is a pretty good scene up here. Wafting of smoke. My parents smoked. That every ashtray in the house was filled. They had an ashtray in the bathroom. Right where you brush your teeth, there was an ashtray. That was filled. My dad had an ashtray on a nightstand. I still have that nightstand. And I swear to God, I'll bring it in here. My dad was the type of guy, sometimes if the ashtray wasn't around, he'd, le he'd put the cigarette on the edge of the table. You know, how you lean it over the edge of the table while you're doing I got to tie my shoe or something. And he'd leave that hanging. I don't know how many coffee tables, end tables. The nightstand has about five or six nice burns right in that veneer. Still have that. My mom used to flip. Well, look at what you're doing to the front room furniture. I'll never forget when he did it with the coffee table. But that party would happen. My dad sometimes would have a party for three days, depending when that holiday landed. I remember as a child waking up in the morning and finding people strewn about the house, on the floor, in the hallways, sleeping on the 
basement tile floor. As a kid, it's one thing, one thing I really liked as a kid. No hangover. <laughs> those are horrible. Are you the type to get those hangovers? Can, I can't handle them anymore. There's no way. That's why I, I don't, I just a little bit, I know my limits, you know. And of course, no food back then. My parents, not on New Year's Eve. No, no, this is a no food event. Eat before you come because we're going to be drinking for three days. Three days.